Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Jeremy. It's great to see all of you today. Everything you need for the service will be on the screens. We are asking everybody to wear your face coverings uh, the whole time, except for communion. We'll time comes. But I'm so glad you are here to worship with us today. Please stand, and we will begin our worship with song. Richard Boy, God, I want to make letters in this world be my own all consuming fire. You can have all my hands can hold. Oh, 
shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, you know all of our failures and shortcomings. Help us use your grace to overcome them and keep us from the things that harm us and others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It is now time for the family children's message. So this day and age, especially right now when everything seems to be going a little crazy and we've kind of forgotten how to treat each other and talk to each other and be with each other, I like to go back to uh, the original Ten Commandments. Anybody know the Ten Commandments? Ever heard of those, maybe? Ava, ever heard of the Ten Commandments? Yeah, maybe. So they're, they're Ten Commandments that God gave Moses to really show how people can... Uh, uh, how you're supposed to treat each other. It's all actually about relationships. It's about two different relationships. It's about our relationship with God and our relationship with each other. The first three commandments are all about our relationship with God. You know, you should have no other gods before me. Uh, don't use the Lord's name wrongly in vain. And keep the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And then the seven others, the rest of the others, all have to do with how we are to treat each other. And According to God, after our relationship with God, you know what the next most important relationship is? The fourth commandment right above God is Ava. Do you know what the fourth commandment is? It says, honor your mother and father. That means that you should do what your mom and dad says. Do you always do what your mom and dad says? Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't. <laughs> And I didn't when I was younger too. But that's our, so it talks about how our relationship with our family is and how important that is and how we are to honor each other. And honoring doesn't mean you just have to do exactly what they say. Honoring means caring and loving and being together uh, as a family for the greater good of everybody. And then the rest of the commandments are the same thing. You know, you shouldn't steal. You shouldn't hurt people. You shouldn't lie about people. You shouldn't want to take other people's stuff. You shouldn't want to be jealous of other people. That we should love and take care of each other and treat each other in God-like ways as a child of God. And we, I think, forget about that all the time. We forget about how God wants us to treat each other. Uh, and that's the Ten Commandments for me is a great way to remind ourselves that maybe we need to go back to the basics and, uh, and learn how to treat each other with love and respect. Let's pray. Oh, good and gracious God, uh, we thank you for giving us these Ten Commandments about our relationship with you and our relationship with each other. Help us to remember these, that these are good and wonderful commands to love each other, to, to treat each other as a child of God, to show each other the same love, mercy, forgiveness uh, that you give us each and every day. We pray this in your Son's holy and precious name. Amen. All right, Ava, past, oh, pastor, Miss Joy should be here any time. I don't know, if Katie, if you would just want to go back there and wait until she comes over. I think she's getting some stuff ready over the other building. And you can go and play with Miss Joy. Do you want to do that? Yeah, yeah. All of you else have to stay here, sorry. So, all right, let's continue with the reading. Hear God's word from Philippians. Paul writes, If then there is any encouragement in Christ, 
any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy. Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise and sing the gospel acclamation together.
Please remain standing for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel comes from Matthew, the 21st chapter. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, Then I will tell you of what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then you did not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for they regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of these two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. So there's a popular term going around uh, these days. It's been around for quite a while when it comes to our uh, society and social media and stuff. Cancer cult, uh, cancel culture. Anybody ever heard of that word? Cancel culture, right? And it means, if you've never heard of it, it means that uh, either a celebrity or a social media influencer or, or store or anybody in the world says something that might offend someone else, or someone else might not agree with it, then they, they want to cancel that person. So, you know, TV shows and celebrities or stores or whatever, and they stop supporting that person or that store and that group and try to get them canceled, all right? And uh, sometimes it is very bad, horrible things that maybe the person did or said, or, or maybe usually it's just something that someone else just doesn't like. So they want to cancel it. This is uh, something that I've seen grow and grow in our society. Uh, My wife, who's a teacher, tells me that dozens of parents come to her school, elementary school, every week, dozens, to register their students at that school. Even now, four weeks into school. And these aren't people that just moved into the area. These are people who are going, their students, their children are going to other schools, and then something happens at that school that they don't like, or they don't like the way they're doing that, or, or whatever, they don't like the teacher, or whatever it is, they don't like it, so they're going to just go to the other school, because I'm sure everything's going to be just great there, right? I mean... I'm sure they're not going to find something they don't like there, right? So they, they're canceling that one school because they don't like it. Their expectations aren't being met, and so they're just going to quit and go to this other school. And it just boggles my mind. I just can't, just as a parent, I can't imagine when my kids were in elementary school 
four or five weeks into the schools, switching schools, and I know some of these families have done it multiple times, just the logistics and the craziness and, and not having something consistent for my children in education. They're not trying to, I'm just trying to not work it out with the school or whatever issue I might have, you know, sticking it out and teaching my children that you just don't quit and walk away if you don't like what, something that's happening. But that's kind of the culture we're in. And you can see it everywhere. And it happens in the church as well. I can't tell you the number of times that myself or Pastor Dave or Pastor Rick has sat down with people who are visiting with us and and we talk to them about about their journey and they share with us, oh, we have been members of this other church in town for years, sometimes 10, 15, 20 years. And we go, well, why are you here? Well, the pastor said something I didn't like, right? Right? Or we decided to support a ministry that I don't agree with. Or the, or the national church that we, that we belong to put out a statement that I don't like. And so I want to go here. And I want you to know that Pastor Rick, Pastor Dave, and I don't say, great, thanks for being here. You know, you're another number, a part of our church. No, we, we actually talk to them about maybe that's not the best decision to make. A place that you've called your faith community for years, maybe you need to think about this a little bit better. You know, if we Christians, if we followers of Jesus Christ, can't learn to get along when we disagree with something, what hope is there for anybody? Especially since our teachings and the, and the scriptures and what Jesus taught us tells us that, that even when we don't agree with everything, that we can still learn to talk it out, to figure it out together, to live together, to treat each other in Christ-like ways and still be able to call each other brothers and sisters in Christ. When I hear our scripture passage from our Gospel of Matthew today, I can't help but think of cancel culture. Because that's what they were doing to Jesus. So Jesus is there. He's teaching. They want to know about what authority. And he gets gets a little upset. So he asks them a question. They couldn't answer about John, John the Baptist. And basically what Jesus is saying is, what Jesus is saying, what I'm saying is nothing different than what John the Baptist said. And you didn't believe him because he didn't meet your expectations of who he was and who the Messiah was going to be because you had your own expectations of what the Messiah was going to be. And he could have easily said, and John wasn't saying anything new that the prophets before him haven't said. And he could even go all the way back to the Ten Commandments like I talked about at the children's message about who God is what God's love's all about, what God's mercy is all about, and how God wants us to treat each other. But they couldn't and didn't want to believe because Jesus did not fit their expectations. They did not like what he was saying, so they wanted to cancel him. And when I think about that in my life, when I've come up against things that I don't agree with, that don't make me happy, I notice that the first thing, the first human reaction I have is to cancel, is to quit, is to walk away, is to go and leave that situation and just go and be around people that think and feel like I do. That's the easy thing to do. And it's our first human feeling to do. It's our first intuition to do that. In fact, I, our, our scripture from Philippians talks about this. And I want to read this again. Our scripture from Philippians talks about what I think is one of our worst human sins that we can have as human beings when it relates to this topic. And here's the Apostle Paul talking about how we are to act as followers of Jesus Christ, not only to each other, but to the world. How we're supposed to act and how we're supposed to be in life. 
Paul says this, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others better than yourselves. Let each of you look not at your own interests, but the interests of others. Selfishness, being humble, looking for the interests of others above your own. Those, those are, for me, some of the hardest human sins for us to overcome. Because immediately we want to think about ourselves, we want to think about our families, what makes me happy, what makes us happy. We don't like to be humble, we like to be first, we like to be the one that knows it all. We want to take care of ourselves first, and maybe I'll look at the interests of others afterwards. That's our first initial reaction to these things. And that's hard, that's hard when those feelings come upon us. This week, for me, I was having a pretty good week. Uh, on Monday, we, we had a great council meeting. We talked about a new partnership we have with Rock Harbor Covenant Church down in Melbourne Beach, and they're going to be starting to worship uh, on Sunday mornings, and we're going to collaborate together in ministry, and, and it was just a great time to be the church together. And the rest of the week went well, too. There was no big issues either at home or, or work. And I got to Friday. Friday was my day off. Who doesn't love their day off? And I was in the morning just drinking my coffee, and I get a phone call. I get a phone call from a congregation member who has a friend who just gave birth prematurely. And it was pretty obvious that this child was not going to make it. And they didn't have any affiliation to a church at, that, at this time, but, you know, they had as a child, and, and they wanted a, a, a Lutheran pastor to come and baptize their child. It's one of the hardest things that I've ever done as a pastor. I've done it several times, and it never gets easier. And I get upset, and I get mad at God. You know, this, this child, this infant, this human being who can fit in the palms of your hands, who we know isn't going to survive, and you just don't have any answers. You don't know why. You need to say, why, God? Why? Why does this stuff have to happen? Why does it happen? And again, the only comfort I can give this family is being there with them, weeping with them, talking about the hope that we have in the resurrection and the hope we have in Christ. But even those words at those times some to seem empty when you're struggling with that. And a lot of times the only way that, uh, especially as a pastor, that I can deal with that stuff is to do it, be there with the family, and then try to just put it in the back of my mind and kind of just forget about it for a little bit because if you just dwell on it, it just kind of eats you up inside. So that's definitely not how I wanted to start my Friday. And then I get a phone call uh, from somebody who I'm working with and I realized that there was miscommunication in our relationship and, and there were hurt feelings and, and brokenness and, and this is a new relationship and we're trying to figure it out and figure out how to do this. And we had to spend time uh, working this out together. And, and there had to be forgiveness. And there, were, and there was apologies. And, and there was talk about new starts. But you know how that is. That's something that you did that you didn't intend to do that hurt somebody else. And we feel bad about that. But at the same time, sometimes we think, well, maybe it isn't all my fault. Maybe it's their fault. And you try to rationalize your own behavior. And then after that, I get a call from another congregation member saying that they've been uh, tested positive for COVID. 
And talking that through that person was, was tough as well. Uh, there, I noticed this uh, with this COVID stuff lately, that there's an embarrassment to it even, or shame to it. And we talked about who they might need to tell and talk to, and who the doctor said they have to talk to, who they come in contact with, what it means for them and their families, and how it's going to disrupt their lives. And, and, you know, the guilt of who else did I infect or did I infect and how did I get it? And all, and all this craziness that we're dealing with about this disease. When you know somebody who's been through it or going through it or has a family member through it, it is tough. It's hard stuff. And, of course, they think about themselves making sure that they're taken care of, making sure that their family is taken care of. So all that happened, and I try to put it kind of behind me, kind of give it to God and go up on my day. And that night, uh, we had a food truck uh, in our community that we're at. So we went to a food, the food truck. It was, it was barbecue, and we got our order, and we brought it home. Uh, I ordered a wonderful Philly cheese steak and, and mac and cheese. You know, good, good comfort food when you had a day like that. I opened my box, and they gave me beans and rice instead of mac and cheese. And I went crazy. Immediately, immediately, I got upset. And again, Pastor Dave has said this a couple weeks ago. You can't control your feelings, and I couldn't control my feelings then. I was upset. And there I was making a fool of myself. You can ask Bailey and Jamie. And I had to stop. And actually, what stopped me, I would say, was the Holy Spirit. I had to stop and say, really? Of all the things that were going on today, all the things that you did and you experienced today, this is what you're upset, upset about. And again, it's just our initial human response. We can't help it. To respond that way. And that's what gets us in trouble. When we can't humble ourselves, when we regard ourselves better than others, when we don't look at other people's interests, when we don't do all the things that Christ and God has told us to do. Not for our salvation, right? Because that doesn't gain us our salvation. But God, Jesus talked more and more about how we are to treat others than, than almost anything else. So obviously it's important. And instead of canceling, instead of just uh, walking away and trying to find something new that we agree with, Christ tells us to be different. But that's hard to do. Because it goes against our humanness. It goes against our human reactions. The initial, because that's the easy thing to do, is just to give up and move on and try to find something that we like that meets our expectations. I was at a, I served at a church of about 4,000 members and I did a lot of weddings. Uh, we, we just had a lot of weddings at that church. Uh, and I did about 13 weddings a year, which is a lot of weddings, a lot of weekends. And we would meet, I'd meet with the couples three times before uh, premarital counseling. And especially when there were young kids, uh, younger kids, I call them kids, younger, young adults getting married for the first time. A lot of things we talk about is love, right? And uh, a lot of times they would pick the wonderful love verse, 1 Corinthians, you know, love is patient, love is kind. You know, all, that, all that wonderful passage about love. And it was a good opportunity for me to tell, talk to them about what love really is about. You know, and I'm not talking about God's unconditional love that God gives us. I'm talking about uh, how we are to love each other. And I always tell them that love is not just a feeling, right? Love is not just a human feeling. Uh, and uh, I'm glad for that because if love was just a human feeling, that some of the things I've done over my marriage uh, might not be married still, right? Because of some, of the, some of the things I've done have not been that loving. Love is just not a feeling. We can't, we can't rely on our human feelings to love someone. I always talk about how love is also a choice. It's a conscious choice to love somebody else. 
It's a conscious choice to put their needs above our own, to look out their interests before our interests. It's a conscious choice to even though when we disagree or we don't like what's happening or they don't meet our expectations, it's a conscious choice to love them, to sit down and figure it out and learn to, to live together, learn to talk it out, and learn what it means to be in relationship with each other. And that's just not with spouses. That's with every single person that we're in relationship with. We have to choose to love each other. And that is a hard choice. Because it takes work. It takes humility. It takes being, for us, followers of Jesus Christ. It takes us being grounded in Christ. That's the hard work to do. But I look at where we are right now in this world, in this country, being a month away from, from an election having this pandemic, you know, with Florida reopening, however you feel about that, the Supreme Court justice, a world that is so divided where people just want to get together with people who agree with them and they want to be right and they want to win. In the world we're living in in this country right now with so much anguish, so much anxiety, I see the need to choose to love each other. And as followers of Jesus Christ, that's what Jesus and God is asking us to do. I get the question all the time, especially now, what difference can I make? What possibly difference can I make in this country, in my life, in the world, when we're so divided that no one wants to talk to anybody, no one wants to have you know, civil discourse, no one wants to try to get to know the other person and, and their point of view, how can I make a difference? Well, I believe as followers of Jesus Christ for the sacred world, how we can make that difference is when those moments happen. When those moments happen, when our expectations are not being met, when those moments happen of things that we don't agree with or we don't like, and that human emotion comes upon us and we get angry, we get anxious, in those moments, we need to stop. We need to stop and center ourselves in Christ. We need to stop and let the Holy Spirit work in us. And then we need to ask for forgiveness of those human sinful feelings. We need to be filled with God's unconditional love and mercy. And we need to start dealing with that situation, that moment, in Christ-like, peaceful merciful ways. If each one of us does that, every time one of those moments happen, we will make a difference in that moment, in that situation. We will show others that our faith matters because we should know better. We have heard what God has told us from the, from the Ten Commandments to the prophets to John the Baptist and to Jesus Christ, we know better. We know how God, how Christ wants us to treat each other, and we need to start acting like it. We need to start doing it. And if we do that in that moment, it will make a difference, and people will see that. That's my hope and prayer for us as a church, for us as followers of Jesus Christ. I know it's hard. I know I need to do a better job at it. But when those moments happen, pause. Ask for God's forgiveness. Ask for God to give you the Holy Spirit. And then go and do the hard work of loving that person, loving that situation, and trying Trying to bring that love 
God's grace and God's forgiveness and mercy into that moment. Amen. We are not passing the offering plates, uh, but they are in the back. If you need to drop your offering off as you leave, please do so. Instead, we are doing little uh, testimonies about people and what they have been thankful for. So we have a little video to show. Let's watch. Aloha, this is Rudy and Ditch. Pastor asked us to, to say what we're grateful for. Um, so I hope you're doing well. We're grateful for the love and forgiveness and promise of eternal life uh, from Jesus. 
and we both made lists and when we compared them they were almost identical so we're just taking turns i am grateful for 49 years of marriage to my best friend and for God blessing our marriage through ups and downs and teaching us a lot. Okay, um, I'm grateful for our church family at Advent uh, who stay, um, who continue to stay and remain part of our lives through Facebook, emails, phone calls, and cards. And I said the same thing, but included also my quilt friends, because we've also been keeping in touch via Zoom and emails and all of the wonderful social media that I always kind of took for granted before. And I'm grateful for all the people involved in making the wonderful YouTube uh, worship service videos so we can stay connected. And that was one that I had too, because those times were when we're able to worship even with just the few people we see on the screens, it feels like our church is there with us, God is there with us, and blessing us. I'm thankful for, uh, uh, grateful for our Zoom Bible study group that faithfully connects every Sunday, even from North Dakota and New Jersey, and one time from the hospital. And we thank, I'm so thankful that Rudy is leading the Bible study and making us think and God is blessing the study. And I'm grateful that I'm going to be able to start a Zoom Bible study for women. Um, this is a little plug. It will start the first Monday of October, whatever that date is, at 11 o'clock. So I'm just grateful that we have these tools to stay connected. So we're going to say aloha now. Um, God's blessings, healing, and protection to you. And we miss you. Aloha. Aloha. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Does it make you smile as much as it makes me smile? Would you pray with me? Gracious Holy Spirit, our hearts are filled with gratitude as we listen to uh, our sister and brother sharing their gratitude. Even in this time of um, challenge, we are so grateful that you are still with us, that we still live in your beautiful creation, that we still have you, we still have one another. Thank you, Lord, for... Uh, so many blessings that you pour out on us. And we pray that the difficult circumstances around us won't overwhelm our ability to see. And thank you for those blessings. By your Holy Spirit, keep our hearts connected to you and to one another. Lord, we pray for our nation and our world. We pray, Lord, um, that you would Help us get past this tendency to demonize one another, to paint people who disagree with us as evil and as uh, irredeemably bad <laughs> for one another. Um, we need your help, Lord, and we pray you'd work through us, your people, your children. Help us, Lord, in this nation and all around the world to be the voice that says we can listen, we can love, we can talk, we can work things out. Work through us, Lord, we pray, in our nation and around the world to be ambassadors for you, to be those who bring peace and a word that draws people together rather than driving them apart. We offer our lives, Lord, to be part of the solution. Thank you for working through us. We pray for our community. We pray for this congregation. We're just figuring things out, Lord. <laughs> um, this is so new to all of us. And we're not sure what's next. So as we get together as a community and as a congregation and as individuals and as families, 
We pray you'd guide us. Help us to listen to you. Help us to listen to one another. Help us to be willing to change, to try things and fail, and then try something else. Just seeking you, seeking your will, seeking to continue to do your work in this very strange and difficult time. God, we lift up before you people we know who need you. Thank you for hearing us as we lift their names up, either aloud or silently. Make your presence known, Lord, to all those who are sick, who are grieving. Thank you for holding them. God, as we leave this place and go out into the world, we pray that you would help us to not just react to our feelings, to not just be stuck on our expectations, but to have the mind of Christ. And we thank you for what you will do through us as your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand as we get ready to partake of this wonderful and holy meal. Each time we gather as God's people, we remember that we receive God's forgiveness and grace. And one of those ways is through this holy meal. And the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he had a final meal with his closest friends. And at that meal, he took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. He gave it to them and said, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is new promise, poured out by my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's together pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. These are God's gifts for us, God's children. You don't have to be a member of this congregation or Lutheran. All are welcome to come and partake of this holy meal. We do have gluten-free elements if you need those as well. And here's how it's going to happen. If you see this wonderful uh, blue lines on the uh, aisle, as you, there are no ushers, so as you come up, all we ask that if you are together in your family unit, that you stay together in a blue line if someone's in front of you and wait till that person moves and you can move up in the, uh, the blue line. There is hand sanitizer in the back as well for you to use. I will be at the very end of the line. I will give you a wafer and tell you the body and blood of Jesus Christ given and shed for you and that you'll take the wafer, eat it, and then you'll move to either your right or left to the station where there's individual cups of the dark liquid, which is wine, the clear liquid, which is juice. Then you'll take a cup, drink it, and then go to the very far stations where is the place where you can put your empty uh, cups. But know this, all who are hungry and thirsty, come eat and drink. The table is set and you are welcome.
Josh didn't want to give the announcements today, so I'll be doing it. No, there's actually a very important uh, announcement in there that I wanted to give. So uh, it is about our partnership, ministry, uh, ministry partnership with Rock Harbor Evangelical Covenant Church down on the Melbourne Beach campus and area. There are new church that started there about a year ago, and uh, they have not been able to find a place to really worship at uh, consistently, especially with COVID. They've been bounced around for a couple of places, and uh, we are partnering with them. Uh, the biggest uh, impact right now is for the Melbourne Beach campus. They're moving their uh, traditional Lutheran service, which is normally at 9 a.m. on Sundays, to 8.30 start time. And Rock Harbor, who usually worships at 9.30, is moving theirs to 10, but we will be worshiping in our space together. So uh, we're excited about this new ministry partner. There'll be a lot more information about it uh, in the weeks to come. There is a video on our website uh, from me that talks a little bit more about this as well. Uh, Family Promise is a wonderful ministry partner that we work with that works with, uh, with, with helping families not be homeless and, and uh, fighting family homelessness. They are up for a $25,000 grant from State Farm uh, Neighborhood Initiatives. And how it worked is they had to be fi uh, the final 200, so they had to write a grant, and, and they became the final 200, which is great. But now it is completely a popularity contest, and that's just the way it goes. So uh, we have to vote in the top 40 out of, 200, out of those 200 organizations, and they're all good, they're all wonderful, but the top 40 that gets the most votes uh, gets each $25,000. So a very easy way to get $25,000. So if you go to votefamilypromise.com, votefamilypromise.com, and you, all you have to do is give your name and your email, and you can vote from today all the way to October 2nd, and you vote 10 times a day, but it's great. There's a little button. It says vote all 10 times, so you only have to do it once uh, a day. So it's 30 seconds to impact 30 families who are living and dealing with homelessness. So we're number 10 right now, which is fantastic and wonderful and great, but we have to keep on voting every day. And anybody who's 18 years old or older and lives in the United States can vote. So please go and vote. We have a brand new messenger format. If you haven't seen it, this is our weekly uh, information uh, publication. It has uh, wonderful information about uh, contact information, about all the announcements I just talked about, and even more. You can pick it up at the table underneath the stained glass in the lobby as you leave. But please grab one of these as well. I know we all want to say hello and talk to each other, which is great, and I do too, but we're going to do that outside so we can better physically distance with each other. That is all the announcements. Please stand as you're able and receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're the only one that I could be for. 
Christ for the sake of the world. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And we, we will. will. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could be for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could be for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could be for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could. 